Let's take a look at solving exponential equations. Now you can follow along with this in the workbook on starting on page 140. So when we're solving an exponential equation, there's a couple things that can help you. Look to rewrite both sides of an exponential equation with the same base. If two sides are equal and their bases are equal, then that means their powers must be equal. Which means if I have a to the x equals a to the y, then that means that s, x must be equal to y. So the other step is that if you cannot write the two sides with the same base, then what you want to do is you want to rewrite the exponential equation as a logarithm equation. So that is the step. If I have a or y equals a to the x power and I want to solve for x, then I would rewrite that as log base a of y equals x. Okay, now it's a little bit harder than that. The equations get way more complicated. But in a sense, you would just rewrite as a logarithm, logarithm equation. So let's take a look at problems that involve that first step. So let's solve this first equation, a. Um, I have 2 to the x equals 8. And I want to rewrite both of these so they have a base of 8 which means I need to change the powers on them. So if I have 2 to the x, we can rewrite 8 as 2 to the third power. So since their bases are the same, their powers are the same. And then we end up with x equals 3. Now to make it a little bit harder, this is pretty much the same problem, problem B here. So, I go 2 to the x minus 5 equals 2 to the third. Now, since their bases are the same, their powers are the same. And we just solve for x. So, add 5 over. And we get x equals 8. You can plug that value back into the original equation to see if that is true or not. So 8 minus 5 is 3, 2 to the third is 8, so it works. All right, let's look at C. So I have 6 to the 4x minus 5 equals 216. So I'm going to write that 216 as the same base as the 6. I can because 216 is 6 to the third power. So then, because their bases are now the same, 4x minus 5 will be equal to 3. Add the 5 over, that's 8. And so x would be 2. Let's take a look at the next one. So I have 9x plus 9, and I want to rewrite 81 as a base of 9. So that would be 9 squared. But then I also have the powers, so you just multiply the powers if you bring an exponent up. So their bases are now the same, so we get x plus 9 equals 2x minus 12. Let's bring the 12 over and the x over. So we've got here 9 plus 12 is 21 equals x. And there is the solution. So let's take a look at E. This one's starting to get a little bit trickier. But I can still rewrite them as the same base because I do have 7 and 49 is a multiple of 7. So I'm going to say we have 7x squared plus 3x. And then I want to rewrite 49 as a 1 49th as a base of 7. So to get from 7 to 49, we square it. And to get the fraction, it's a negative. So there would be our equation, because 1 49th is 7 to the negative second power. The bases now are the same, 
So I can rewrite this as x squared plus 3x equals negative 2. I am going to just go and solve this quadratic equation by adding the 2 over and factoring. Luckily it factors. If it doesn't factor, you would just use the quadratic equation or complete the square if you're brave. And so we get here x equals negative 2 and negative 1. All right, and both of those solutions will work because on all exponential equations, um, you don't get any um, extraneous solutions or restrictions in the domain. Okay, so f here I have e to the x minus 4 is equal to 1 over e. So this will be the same idea. I want to make this 1 over e just a base of e. So this would end up being e to the x minus 4. And to make that e not a fraction anymore, we write it as e to the negative 1. So now the bases are the same. So I have here x minus 4 equals negative 1. And easy enough, I just add that 4 over and I get x equals 3. Now let's take a look at g. So I want to rewrite them both with the same base. I have a 25 and a 5. So we will want, luckily 25 is a multiple of 5, 5 and 5. So we're going to rewrite them both with a base of 5. So 25 to the x is really like 5 squared times x, or to the x. Now the 1 over the square root of 5 is a little bit tricky. That is like 1 over 5 to the 1 half power. But I do not want a fraction, so whenever you have the fraction, make sure you include a negative as the power. So it would be 5 to the negative 1 half. Okay, now that we have them having the same base, we can just let their powers equal each other. So negative 2x is equal to negative 1 half. Let's go ahead and just divide both sides by negative 2. And negative 1 half divided by negative 2, just a quick refresher, that's like negative 1 half times 1 over negative 2, because when you're dividing, you multiply by the reciprocal, which ends up being 1 fourth. So that means that x is equal to positive 1 fourth, because the negative times the negative is the positive. So those are problems where you can rewrite the base as the same. So what you need to check for is can I rewrite both sides of the equation having whatever that base is the same? And you're going to look for powers of one of the root numbers. Now let's take a look at examples where you cannot rewrite them having the same base. So let's say I have 10 to the x is equal to 4.4. I cannot write 4.41 as a base of 10, or 10 as a base of 4.41. So what you need to do is we're going to rewrite these as logarithms. So you start with the base. I'm going to start at 10 and hook it around. So that would give us log base 10 of 4.41 is equal to x. All right. Actually, I forgot the, to write the base 10, but when you do, do have base 10, you actually don't write it. So your final answer is log or x is equal to log of 4.41. So that was a very simple case of this problem. They will get a lot harder. <laughs> so when I have my exponential expression, the first thing I want to do is make sure that the exponential group is solved for. So I will divide by 2. So I have e to the x minus 5 is equal to 12. 
Now I want to rewrite this as a logarithm. So we end up with log base e of 12 equals x minus 5. Well, log base e is ln, so the natural log of 12. And then I'm just going to add the 5 over. And that's our final answer. You cannot combine the 12 and the 5 because that 12 is being applied to the natural log first and then you're adding 5. All right, so when we cannot rewrite these as the same base, um, you can either rewrite them as a logarithm or there's one other thing you can do that actually makes most of these problems a little bit easier, especially if you need to eventually plug them into a calculator. And what that is, is you would want to take the natural log of both sides. The main reason that's important for us now is because they ask us to express the solution in terms of natural logarithms, meaning that we want to take the natural log of both sides. It sounds pretty tricky, but it's actually a very simple process. So if I have 10 to the x equals 4.41, what you're going to do is you're going to take the natural log of both sides. You can do that as long as you do it to both sides. Now, if you go ahead and take the natural log of both sides, any of the powers will come in front. So I have x natural log of 10 equals the natural log of 4.41. And then now since my power comes out in front, it's being multiplied, I can divide both sides by the natural log of 10. And your final answer then would be the natural log of 4.41 over the natural log of 10. There's our final answer expressed in terms of natural logs. Okay, let's try number two. So first thing you want to do is divide by two because you want to get the logarithm all by itself. And then we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we have the natural log of e to the x minus 5 and the natural log of 12. So we end up with x minus 5 natural log of e equals the natural log of 12. Okay, good news here. ln of e is 1. So we really just have x minus 5 equals the natural log of 12. And we just need to add that 5 over. Okay, and that's it. So here we have 6 to the 4x minus 5 equals 417. So we need to take the natural log of both sides. Okay, so we bring our power in front. 4x minus 5 times the natural log of 6 is equal to ln of 417. Now I can either divide by ln of 6 first, or I can distribute the ln of 6 through. It really doesn't matter, so let's go ahead and just divide it now. There will be a time when it would matter to distribute the ln of 6 through. So I end up with 4x minus 5 is equal to the natural log of 417 over the natural log of 6 I'm going to add the 5 over, so we've got ln of 417 over ln of 6 plus 5. Now the last thing, and this one can get a little tricky, is we just need to divide by 4. But I need to divide this by 4 and the 5 by 4. So whenever we divide by a number, it goes into the denominator. 
So I have ln of 417 over 4 natural log of 6 plus 5 over 4. So dividing by this 4 brings it into the denominator. There's our final answer. So when you have a variable on both sides, these problems get a little bit harder. So let's try it and see what happens. So when we do these, the process will still be the same. I'm going to take the natural log of, of both sides, and I'm going to bring those variables out in front. So I have x natural log of 2 equals x minus 1 natural log of 3. Okay, remember this. When you are solving for a specific variable, you want that variable all on one side and everything else on the other side, which means I have to distribute that natural log of 3 through. x natural log of 2 is equal to x natural log of 3 minus 1 times natural log of 3. Okay. So then anything that is, has an x on it, let's bring it over to the other side. So I end up with x natural log of 2 minus x natural log of 3 equals negative natural log of 3. So we have an x here now and an x here. So what we're going to do is factor the x out x times natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 3 is equal to negative natural log of 3. Since x is being multiplied here, we're just going to divide both sides by ln of 2 minus ln of 3. ln of 2 minus ln of 3 here. So then we finally get our x is equal to negative natural log of 3 over natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 3. There is our final answer in terms of natural logarithms. The nice thing about having them in terms of natural logarithms, once again, is that you can um, plug it into your calculator and get the uh, estimation for the answer pretty quick. Let's take a look at one more of those. It's really nice when you can rewrite the bases as the same base on both sides, but of course on these ones, because we're practicing not doing that, you can't. So I'm going to have 3 to the 1 minus 2x equals 4 to the x. So let's start off by taking the natural log of both sides and bringing the power in front. Remember, that's one of our rules. So I have 1 minus 2x natural log of 3 equals x natural log of 4. We're going to need to distribute 1 times natural log of 3 minus 2x natural log of 3 equals x natural log of 4. Okay, so what we're going to do here is bring anything over with an x onto one side, so I'm just going to add this group over. x natural log of 4 plus 2x natural log of 3. We're going to factor out the x. So I have natural log of 4 plus 2 natural log of 3. And divide both sides by that ln of 4 plus 2 ln of 3. And then so what we get as our final answer is that x is equal to the natural log of 3 divided by the natural log of 4 plus 2 natural log of 3. Okay, you cannot cancel out those ln of 3's because of the addition, so be careful not to do that. 
And there are a couple ways you can rewrite this, but we're not going to do that. Um, well, we're not going to write that as our final answer, but just so you know, if you wanted to, you could bring that 2 up onto the 3 and make that ln of 9, and then go ln of 4 plus ln of 9 is ln of 36. But this is okay, having it just written out like this. So f is actually, you can look at f, and a lot of people can get to the answer just by looking at it, but we'll do the math behind it so you can see why. So let's go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. So we get x natural log of 3 equals x natural log of 4. They both have an x, so let's subtract it over. x natural log of 3 minus x natural log of 4 is equal to 0. Factor the x out. Natural log of 3 minus natural log of 4 equals 0. And it doesn't matter what you divide by. Anything divided by, or 0 divided by anything is just 0. So if you think about the original problem, the only thing I can plug in for x would be 0. That's the only thing that would make that work. Okay, this is kind of like a little bonus question. This one's pretty tricky. So let's go ahead and go over this. It is going to be a factoring problem, which means I want to take a look at this middle term, and I'm going to set that middle term equal to you, just the variable. And if I were to square that, e to the 2x squared, would be e to the 4x. So that means what I have here is u squared plus 4u minus 21 equals 0. So I had to use the u substitution. I'm going to go ahead and factor that into u plus 7 and u minus 3. Okay, so u will equal negative 7 and u will equal 3. I'm going to go back through and plug what u was equal to. So I have e to the 2x equals negative 7. Uh-oh, that might be a problem. And then we also have e to the 2x equals 3. All right, so I'm going to solve those then. Now, can I ever have my exponent equal a negative, meaning if I were to take the natural log of both sides here, can I have the natural log of a negative? The answer is absolutely not, never. So there's no solution from here. But let's take a look at the second one. If I take the natural log here, I get 2x ln of e equals ln of 3 which really is just 2x equals the natural log of 3. Divide both sides by the 2, and I get here x equals the natural log of 3 over 2. And there's our final answer. Okay, so that is it for those videos. Obviously, g is a very tricky problem that involves either u substitution or factoring, actually a combination of both. So um, just kind of follow this pattern and you should be okay.